31 in your songbook, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Lift up your voice this morning. We're so glad you're in service this morning. 531. All hail. Good to be in church this morning and thankful for all of God's blessings. Pastor Clark's going to come and open us up in prayer here this morning and ask for God's blessing on the service because that's what we need more than anything. Good morning, church. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and we can be in church today. And uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you'll just encourage us and Lord, bless us. I pray you'll be very real and very close to us today. I pray you bless the whole day. I pray you watch over the buses and, Lord, the kids' church. And, Lord, I pray for anybody here that's not saved that you just open their understanding and they trust you. Bless the music, the singing, the praising, the preaching, everything we do. And we love you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. You know, if you wonder about something, like I wonder what the weather is going to be, that's one way of wondering. There's the idea of, you know, I wonder how to put that thing together. But then there's the wonder where you're just in amazement about something. It causes you to wonder in the sense of I'm in awe of that. The wonder or just adoration. And these are things that when we consider what, it really, what really occurred when Jesus died on the cross, it, it should just cause us to wonder, to be in awe, to adore him, to, to just be amazed by God giving his son. Maybe you're here this morning and never heard what's called the gospel. That word gospel means good news. Let me give it to you in one verse. Ready? 
for God, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means you or anyone, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. None of us would have any hope of heaven if not for the fact that Jesus had died on Calvary's cross for us. And we should never get over it. If we've been saved, we should never get over what happened on the cross. change the song. Let's sing the old rugged cross and let's all stand. We, uh, 
sir? 56 in your book. The old rugged cross. Hey, let's think about the Lord this morning. Get your mind off all the other nonsense out there in the world. And let's just focus in on Jesus and all that he did for us. This is a great song. Sing it out together. On a hill far away. stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see how can you see beauty in a cross for twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died why to pardon and sanctify me sing that third verse think about it we'll pick up the pace a little bit in the old rugged cross stained with blood so sing, oh, worship the king. 380, I'm glad that our God is alive and well this morning. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't stay on the cross. Up from the grave he arose. Sing it out together. Oh, worship the king.
You can be seated. Choir and orchestra, thank you. And I can go ahead and dismiss everybody out at this time and let you get around and back to your seats. Appreciate them playing and singing today. I've enjoyed the music. If you're our guest, thanks for being here. We always love when folks come and visit at Solid Rock Baptist Church. I want you to make yourself at home. We like to give you what we call a response card. ask you to fill that out. And then if you would, as you leave, hand it off to one of the ushers. They'll be standing there at the back. So I won't make you stand or give a speech, but if you're here today for the first time or here just once in a while, would you raise your hand high enough where the men could find you? They'll come through very quickly. I promise you won't have to keep your hand up for very long. And thank you for being here today. Not sure how you heard about the church, but we're glad that you've come. And if you've come as someone's uh, guest, they're especially glad that you've come. And it's always good to have people in church that are here with us and for the first time. So thank you for being here. We're going to pray for our offering at this time. If you like to give, you can give online or you can give it to one of the ushers as you leave. Uh, they'll be at the back with offering plates. You can mail it into the church or you can bring it by the church. And let's pray that God gives us a good offering. I know what they say about the economy. I understand all the increases and in cost and, and it's tough and trying to survive South Jersey, but God's able, and God will meet your needs, and God's going to meet the needs of the church. We have confidence in God. How many of you could just say this morning, you're blessed? Are you blessed, right? I mean, I'm blessed, and I know God's been so good to me, and I'm so grateful for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give, and Lord, truly, it's our privilege, and you said you love a cheerful giver, and so God, I pray that you would help us to give, help us to give cheerfully, help us to give sacrificially. And Lord, I pray you'd meet the needs of the church. It's your church, and God, I pray you pay its bills. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to take new ground, be able to do more for the furtherance of the gospel. Lord, I pray you give us miracle money to build the classrooms we need to build and all the other projects and things we need to do. And you're able, and God, I believe that. I pray you'd send $10 million into this church. Lord, we could pay off this mortgage. We could build more buildings. And Lord, it would all be for your glory. So I pray you'd do it. God, I pray you bless each person who gives. And I thank you for their obedience to your word and giving tithes and offerings. And I pray you take care of them, meet their needs. Pray for anyone here that's unemployed, people looking for a different job, a better job. I pray you'd hear their prayers. I pray for people on fixed income, that you'd help them. And Lord, you'd stretch their money and take care of them. And God, anybody's just under a weight of burden about finance, I pray you'd hear their prayers and lift that and help them. Lord, you've been given us so many blessings, not just financial, Lord. We're just, we're just overwhelmed by your goodness to us, and we're grateful today. And we pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name, amen. I'm going to the Doucette family come at this time. I've now said this three times today. These boys were born in Canada, and then moved to Texas, and then traveled the country. And about 90% of the time, you see a big bus out there. These four guys and dad and mom, brother, Mr. Doucette, if you raise your hand, please. They're here on the middle aisle. They travel together. They're, you say, wasn't there five of them last year? There was. Uh, the oldest, Holton, he got married. And so it's the old, I've married a wife, I cannot come. He's there working in a local church in Texas, and then they have a sister. Sister's the firstborn? She's the oldest, actually, and she's serving the Lord in Alabama. And so these are people that have a heart for God, and I'm glad for it. And we've had them now in, this is the third year in a row, and enjoyed them every time they've been here. And so y'all smile at them. They've come to New Jersey. They're the only people to frown at them the whole time. And you guys look happy up here. All right, let's go. Harling, get that smile on once in a while. Beat these guys up. Uh, I'm glad that they're here. And they have a commitment to excellence that I think is a good testimony for the Lord. They're not performers. They're servants of the Lord. And that's why they're up here playing. And good songs. You know, music is something where God wants to stir us today. That we would worship Him in spirit and in truth. So let's listen. Trust me, you want it in tune. <laughs> I'm excited to be. 
be saved from a life of sin depraved. For the master came one day and set me free. I was lost, but now I'm found. By God's grace, I'm heaven bound. I'm excited for the master lives in me. I'm excited. I'm excited for the Lord lives in me. I'm excited. I'm excited living in victory. I've been washed in the blood, cleansed by Calvary's blood. I'm excited for the master lives in me. I'm excited now to tell He can save your soul from hell If you'll just repent Trust the Lord today When you hear the Spirit call Oh my friend surrender all He will save your soul And then you'll truly say I'm excited I'm excited for the Lord lives in me I'm excited I'm excited living in victory I've been washed in the blood Cleansed by Calvary's blood for the master lives in me. I'm excited just to know soon I'll hear the trumpet blow in the twinkling of an eye I'll leave for home. I'll see Jesus face to face, praise Him for amazing grace. I'm excited that the best is yet to come. I'm excited. I'm excited for the Lord lives in me. I'm excited. I'm excited living in victory. I've been washed in the blood, cleansed by Calvary's blood. I'm excited for the Master lives in me. Forgiven through and through, my past has been erased through Jesus, I am free, and by his saving grace there's been a change in me, not the same ever since the Savior found me, not the same since he turned my life around, my sins have been covered by his blood, praise his name, I'm not the same. This world and its ways he renews my spirit with his mercy every day he gives me peace of mind and life abundantly i won't be turning back i've tasted victory 
not the same ever since the Savior found me. Not the same since he turned my life around. My sins have been covered by his blood. Praise his name, I'm not the, not the same ever since the Savior found me. Not the same since he turned my life around. My sins have been covered by his blood. Praise his name, I'm not the, not the same. Man, I'm glad I'm not the same because I don't want to stay the same way that I was before. And I'm glad that the Lord changes us and he makes us more like, the, like his son, to the image of his son. And I'm, I'm thankful uh, that when he looks at me, he doesn't see who I really am. He doesn't see all my faults, all my failures. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ that, sh that covers all my sins, covers who I was before. And I'm no longer the one that I was before. I'm no longer who I was. And what I, what I did before, I don't do now. But even when I do fall, he still sees his son. He still sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that this morning. And nevermore could man behold. There must come a lamb, one whose blood alone redeems, bringing gifts to the Father of our souls made white and clean. So he left that holy city, traveling on to the cross, just to bridge the gulf of glory and to rescue all the lost. His blood, he entered into the throne room of our God, and on the mercy seat he placed it, salvation for us all. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb, he sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments that are as white. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and He washed me this I know. Now the Lord, He dwells within me, oh, the joy that floods my soul. But there are times when I fail Him, and I feel so all alone. Then with a broken heart I come and approach the throne of grace but he said son you are forgiven for on the cross I took your place and when he sees me he sees the blood of the lamb he sees me as worthy and not as I am he views me in garments that are as white for the Lamb of God is worthy, and He washed me this I know. And when He sees me, He sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy, and not as I am. He views me in garments that are as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and he washed me this I know. Oh. 
garden bought for me, and I am now complete in Thee, complete in Thee, each want supplied, and no good thing to me denied, since Thou my portion, Lord, will be. I ask no more, complete in Thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified, salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified, I too shall be. Complete in Thee, no more shall sin. Thy grace hath conquered, reign within. Thy voice shall bid the tempter flee, and I shall stand complete in Thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified, salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified, I too shall be. Dear Savior, when before thy bar all tribes and tongues assembled are, among thy chosen will I be at thy right hand, complete in thee. Yea, justified, O oh blessed thought, and sanctified, salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified, I too shall be. shall stand complete in Thee. of sin and death are chains but he with blood our freedom bought it was finished on the cross it was finished on the cross the weight of sin the sting of death were swallowed up by righteousness, vanquished by the Son of God. It was finished on the cross. It was finished on the cross. And we rejoice in victory. We lift our eyes to Calvary. Before the battle has begun, by Jesus' blood it has been won. It was finished on. Oh. 
while our hearts have turned from sin, this flesh is waging war within. Though sin remains, our guilt is gone. It was finished on the cross. It was finished on the This gift of grace our hearts betray with urge to merit or repay but we need not live to pay the cost for it was finished on the cross Thank you, man. Thank God. I could listen to that all day. They'll be playing and singing tonight for as long as they want. And we're going to just come and let the Lord move in our heart. Pastor, give us a message from the Bible. I hope you'll be back tonight. And uh, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Boy, that goes to the depths of my soul to think about the Lord and think about how good God is. It's just overwhelming to think about the goodness of God and in our lives. If you don't know the Lord, physically you're living, but you're not really living. And Jesus died on the cross so that you can be given spiritual life. And that's so very, very important. Please turn in the Word of God to Psalm chapter 71. If you don't have a Bible, there's one there in the songbook rack. And if you turn right around to the middle of your Bible, you will find the book of Psalms. And we want to be in Psalm chapter 71 this morning and looking forward to opening up God's Word. We've got our Spanish church going on and Deaf church going on and three junior churches going on and little nursery and children's classes. And then we have 2 o'clock service this afternoon, 5 o'clock, 5.30 service this evening. So much happening here and we want God to be part of all of it. We've had a good week. Vision Baptist College has now reopened, and we're thankful for that. Looking forward to Solid Rock Christian School opening this coming Wednesday. So we're getting back into the fall routine and uh, looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. We want to see souls saved and lives changed here at our church. We need to pray for our country. Our country needs revival. Our country needs to turn back to God. And God is the only hope for America. I'll say it again, God is the only hope for America. He's the only one that can help us. And we need to pray that the Lord would bring revival. Hudson spoke in the adult Bible class hour this morning, appreciated his lesson from the Bible, message from the Bible, and it stirred my heart. I'm glad for it, and uh, I just, I'm just glad I'm saved this morning. And boy, you think about those thoughts, uh, it is finished and complete in thee. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. Right? It's just good. It's good to know the Lord. Father, I pray in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
that you be with Brother Chris as he preaches in Deaf Church, and I pray for Brother Sergio as he's preaching in Spanish Church today. And Lord, I pray for those preaching in the junior churches. I pray for Mike Morrow preaching in Ohio. I pray you'd fill him with the Holy Ghost right now and be with him and Christiana and Michael and the baby. And God, I pray you be with any of our other people that are out ministering today. Pray for our people might be on vacation, wherever they're in church. I pray you bless all these folks. I pray you'd help our churches all across this country that still preach the Bible. And God, I pray that people would look to you. I pray our nation would repent. And I pray you'd have mercy. And I pray you'd give us revival. God, I pray for Christians all around the world as they gather today. I pray you put a hedge of protection about them. I pray for people, Lord, especially people that are in places where they're pressured or persecuted about their Christianity. Lord, please protect them and be with them. Bless all the missionaries. Help them as they minister today. I pray you give them fruits for their labor. God, I pray for anyone in ministry work that might be ready to quit. I pray that they won't. I pray for any churches or pastors ready to quit. God, I pray you give them handfuls of purpose today and strengthen them. I pray for this auditorium right now that you'd meet with us. Lord, you already have, and we want to say thank you. But as we preach your word, I pray you'd stir every heart. Lord, people could be easily distracted. God, I pray you keep us from that today. Pray for people that are just restless or dealing with anxiety or just nerves in general. I pray you calm their spirit. And God, I pray for anyone here that doesn't know Jesus as their own personal Lord and Savior. I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for anyone here that's not living for you right now. I pray that they'd see the error of their ways, and I pray you bring them back into the fold. God, I pray you'd hide me behind the cross. I pray Jesus would have the preeminence. I pray, Lord, that you'd help me not to say anything I shouldn't say. And Lord, I pray you'd help me to say what I should say from this book right now. And I pray the book would speak. And I pray you'd get the glory. Thanks for loving us. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. We're in Psalm 71. And as we read through Psalm 71, I believe David's the author by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know who David was, David was the king of Israel. I believe he's the greatest king Israel ever had. The Jewish flag today has the star of David on it. David was a great man. He's most famous for killing Goliath. But when we come to Psalm 71, David is an older man. And very well could have been the time when his own son Absalom had risen up against David in rebellion and wanted to overthrow his own, overthrow his own father who was king in Israel. And so David had been through some adversity and David had been through some tough times. And he's no longer a young man in this chapter. He's an older man. And in this chapter, I want you to pay close attention as David shares his heart. And we see his heart for God in this chapter. Psalm 71. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O oh Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him, persecute and take him. For there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed. 
that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to every one that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high, who has done great things. O God, who is like unto thee? Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. David lived a very active life. David lived a very busy life. He's an older man. David died at age 70. Life expectancy then would not be quite what it is for us today. So he's most likely in his 60s when he's given this chapter and he's sharing these thoughts that God's put on his heart. But he's still alive and he's still kicking and he's still going. With most of his life in the rearview mirror here, David still was a very determined man, a very spiritual man. And he was determined that with whatever life he still had to live, he was going to live his life for God. And although David physically had grown weaker as age brings that weakness upon you, David was not weak in spirit. And David had a desire to live and in a certain way. And I want you to notice verse 16. Here's what David said. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. All of us should make this decision today. That we're not going to live our life according to our strength, according to our wisdom, according to our intellect, according to our power. But instead, I want you to see David's wholehearted dependence on God. If there's anything we need in our nation, it's a return to God and a return to depending on God. And instead of somehow inserting ourselves as if somehow we have some power, we need to know that anything good that goes on in our lives is because of God strengthening us in our lives. If you notice in verse 16, the second half, David said this, I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine, and notice that last word, only. David was not trying to insert himself. Now, if anybody could have had a reason to maybe insert himself, David was the guy that killed Goliath. People today that don't really even know the Bible, they know that story. Certain times of the year in American culture, march with March Madness. They'll, they'll talk about, well, that's a David and Goliath story. Well, David's the man that by God's grace was able to kill Goliath. David's a man that stood out in the word of God. He was called a man after God's own heart. But even David, church, listen, even David had enough spiritual sense and discernment to know Anything that occurs in my life that's good, it's not because of me, it's all because of God. And I'm glad you're in church today. But if you're in church today, it's because of the grace of God. It's because of the goodness of God, and it's God's strength that we need in our lives. 
we're not supposed to operate in the spirit and power of the flesh. We are to operate according to God's power and according to God's strength. And David very clearly said, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Would you make that decision today? You say, Brother Charlie, I'm old. Well, David was old. And David, although old, made a decision. I will go in the strength of the Lord. Just because you're old doesn't mean you need to live without God's strength. If any, you need it more than you ever have. Say, I feel weak today for whatever reason. You say, man, I just feel like I just drug myself into church today. It could be physically you feel weakened in some way. Maybe in your mind you just feel like, man, I'm under attack. Maybe your emotion, your spirit, you just feel flat as a pancake, could be discouraged, could be depressed. Well, let me just tell you something. For as low as you may feel, God is still high and lifted up on his throne. And God wants to give you his strength. Are you listening? Whoever you are here, in whatever condition you may feel, in a state of weakness or inability, God is looking today to give you the strength that belongs to his person so that you can live your Christian life for him. And if you don't know the Lord, he wants to save your soul. He wants to change your life and he has the power to do it. Say, man, I'm just whooped. The world beat me up this week. I feel like I've been beat to death this week. Well, listen, God still has strength and he wants to give you his strength, but you have to choose, you have to choose to walk in the strength of God. Sometimes people get under a burden. A lot of different things can cause burdens. But maybe you just feel, man, it's just like the, world, the, the, the weight of the world is on my shoulders right now. God, God has the power to give you that strength that belongs to him. And you can go on for God. No matter what your age, no matter what your situation, no matter what you're dealing with. You say, but Brother Charlie, I feel like I failed. I feel like I failed the Lord. Well, I'll testify, I failed the Lord many times. But although I failed the Lord, the Lord has never failed me. And he's a merciful, patient, long-suffering, kind God who wants to restore you to a place of spiritual strength if we would choose to be dependent on him. David in this story says, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Let me ask you a question. Are you walking according to your strength, your abilities, your charisma, your intellect, your intelligence, or are you understanding on a daily basis, I can't go unless I go in God's strength and not really be spiritually successful. You can go in your own strength. It'll take you for a little while, but not what you need. David, a man after God's own heart. Let's go to the beginning of this chapter. I want you to see some things here in the word of God. And how can you make the decision today, I will go in the strength of the Lord? How can you get to that place? What, what should you see? What should you think? What should you feel? Well, David was a man after God's own heart. David loved what God loved. David thought the way God thought. And God loved and liked David. And David, as a man after God's own heart, in this chapter, was just communing with God. I want to ask you a question. Do you have the type relationship with God where you're communing with God? And we're going to see two major ways he's doing it in Psalm 71. It's both with his prayer and with his praise. With his prayer and with his praise. He's speaking to God. And God's speaking to him in his heart. And he's praising God with all of his heart. God wants to have a relationship with you. And please hear me. If you're saved, you've already been born again. You're a child of God. Please hear me. God doesn't want you to have a distant relationship with him. He's your father and he wants to be close with you. That's what he desires. And that's what David had. I want you to notice verse 1 here. Here's what he said. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. He didn't say... In thee, David, I put my trust. He said, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. David knew not to trust David. 
Now, he's an older man. He has much experience. He's the king of Israel and its greatest king. He could have sat there and thought highly of himself, but he didn't. He wanted to trust God. We, as I've already mentioned, need a revival of depending on God and trusting in God. He said, let me never be put to confusion. Here's what it means. It's this idea of David had put his trust in God. And he didn't want it just to all fall apart. He wanted God to help him to walk in God's will. And to be on that path of God's will for his life. And he didn't want to go and live and feel as if God wasn't in his picture. And it would bring about a confusion. God loves you if you're saved. God loves you as his child. But if you step outside of trusting God, be prepared for the wheels to fall off. Be be prepared for it to not go well. The idea, well, I'm a child of God. Well, if you're a child of God, put your trust in God and don't go according to your way and according to your one and according to your will. Go according to God's will. Because if you go contrary to the will of God, young people, listen to me, it's going to bring about a lot of heartache in your life. And David's here before God, and he's, God, I'm trusting you. Lord, I need you to keep it all together. I pray, and I say this, God, I pray you won't have to get my attention. Oh, my. I don't want to live where God has to get my attention. I have family. At this point, I have grandchildren. I have responsibility on whatever level in this local church. I have friends. I don't want God to have to get my attention because I'm not directing my attention. Make a choice like David. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me, notice this, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. David had enemies that were coming at him. We're going to see it throughout this chapter. And here he says to God, God, save me. Save me. Now, if you're not saved in the sense of Bible salvation, you need to be saved. That's your first need. With everything I preach today, your mind really doesn't need to go beyond this simple thought. I need to be saved. So what does saved mean? Let me quickly explain. Bible teaches we're all sinners. Sin is anything you do that's wrong. As it is written in Scripture, there is none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. Sin is anything we've done that's wrong. Because we're sinners, we deserve punishment for our sins. When I was younger and I did wrong, I got whooped up on. I didn't get a time out, I got whooped up. And I was punished. And that was by my parents. You get in trouble at school, you had to see the principal. That's where Pastor Clark lived, at the principal's office. You get a little bit older, you break the law, you got to go before the judge. That's not good. You do the crime, you do the time. There's punishment for sin. People have this idea God's an old man floating around on a cloud just kind of winking at our sin. God is a God of love. But God is also a just God. He's never sinned, not even one time. And it's just God. He can't look on our sin and just act like it's not there. Sin must be judged. It doesn't matter how much if my dad were the judge. It doesn't matter how much he loved me. If I go into court and I've broken the law and he's the judge, he still has to issue out what that judgment would be. If he's the right type of judge. And please hear me, God is the perfect judge. And because of my sin... I deserve hell. And God knew that, that he would have to cast me into hell for all of eternity. Well, I don't know if I believe in hell. Well, you need to read the Bible. Because Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Hell's a real place, a separation from God. We believe it's in the heart of the earth. People drill down with drills. At a certain point, it'll melt down any drill. Because of the fire, you think about volcanoes and liquid fire and all that comes out. I believe hell's in the heart of the earth. And that's God's punishment that we would go and send, spend eternity in hell. But watch this. God loves you so much. Remember that verse I quoted at the beginning of our service? For God so loved the world. The world means you. That he gave his only begotten son. That was Jesus. 
to die on Calvary's cross as the men sang about and as the choir sang about and as our hymns sang about today. He died on the cross because he loved you. Say, well, why? Why did he have to do that? Because all of the good you could ever do would never take away your sin. You can join a church. You can get baptized. You can put money in an offering plate. You can move into this church building, but that does not save you. It's not if my good outweighs my bad, then I get the free ticket in. My bad outweighs my good, then I have to go to hell. No, listen, all of the good you could ever do will never take away not even one sin. There's only one who can wash away sin. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And his blood shed on Calvary's cross is what made atonement. It made the payment for your sin. You owe God a debt you could never pay. But thank God Jesus paid your debt. He died on the cross for you. And to be saved means there's a time in your life when you stop trusting what you can do and you put your total faith in what Christ already did. Many times people have been taught through religion that going to heaven is like climbing a ladder. Boy, I got all the different rungs on the ladder. If I do this, what my religion says, and do this, what my religion says, eventually I'll be able to climb up to the top. There's no ladder you climb. There's a cross that you believe. Jesus died on the cross. He's the one that can bridge you to heaven. He can take you to heaven. And outside of Christ, you have no hope. David here would have had a looking forward, and there's all types of prophecies in the Psalms, a believer, we need to believe in Christ. But in the context of save me, his actual life and in the moment, I want you to hear me. You don't have to be afraid while living in this world of the enemies and opponents that come against you. I know it's a crazy world. It's going to get crazier. And there's a lot of adversity there's a lot of anxiety. There are a lot of people that are looking at the world scene, and even if they don't know the Bible, they know something's wrong. And by the way, they're not wrong to think something's wrong. Well, if we just do this and we do that, it's going to all be better. No, no. Read your Bible. The Bible teaches that things are going to fall apart in the world. But as someone has said, it's really just coming together according to God's plan. God is working his plan. And in an age where things get crazier and crazier, and there's more and more confusion, you can have clarity by trusting in God. Notice verse 4, please. 3. Be thou my... Help me, church. What's those next two words? Strong habitation. Now, as we go through this chapter, I want you to notice the word strong or strength. Notice, be thou my strong habitation. You say, what's the habitation? It's where you reside. It's the thing you're living in, the thing you're dwelling in. Here's what he says. God, I'm going to let you be my strong habitation. How can I go in the strength of the Lord to allow God to be my strong habitation where I'm protected, whereunto I may continually resort? The greatest resort that you could ever visit is the strong habitation of God. It's the best place you can live. It's the best place you can be to be protected by God. Thou hast given commandment to save me. I like that, the commandment. David was somebody that knew and believed that God was taking care of him. In the context of our Bible salvation, listen, we have commandment for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't just hope I'm saved or think I'm saved. I know I'm saved. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with what God has commanded in his word. These things are written that she may know that she have eternal life. So thank God for the commandment to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Boy, you think of a fortress, something that can't be penetrated. You think about a place that, where there's safety and protection. And God wants to be that for you. Deliver me, oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. David here, as an old man, still had enemies. And in life, you're going to have people that venture out against you and oppose you. David quite likely had Absalom at this stage, his own son. And he prayed to God for deliverance. Notice verse 5, for thou art my hope. You ought to mark that statement. Thou art my hope. 
That word hope means a confident expectation. Pastor Clark's taught us that so many times. Our hope means a confident expectation. Oh, Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. David knew that he could depend on God. And he said it specifically from my youth. Remember back, David was just a young man, probably a, a late in his teenage years, when God used him to kill Goliath. What an amazing thing, an amazing story in 1 Samuel 17, when a young boy shows up and goes against the most renowned professional soldier that there was in the land, and God used David to take that sling and let that rock go, and for Goliath to fall over, and David pulls Goliath's swords out and chops his head off. How cool is that? You say, how did David do that in God's strength? When you look at 1 Samuel 17, David wasn't relying on David. David was relying on God. Young people, are you listening? From the time he was young, he knew to put his trust in God. Well, I'm young. I'm strong. I'm going to make my own path. I'll be a self-made man. You're a fool. You're a fool. You better figure it out, my young brother. You need God's help in your life. Don't attempt to live life in your own strength. Live it according to God's strength. And David had learned that. He said, from my youth, I have been trusting God. What a thing. My hope, my confidence, the arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Notice verse 6, by thee. Have I been holding up from the womb? Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. He said, from the time I was born, God's the one who's protected me. God notices I've been holding up from the womb. You know why you're upright? The grace of God. Come on now. Everybody adjust your halo here today. Come on. You look, ah, but child, what do you mean? Listen, here's the thought. We better make sure that we're giving God the glory for our story. We better make sure we understand where our strength's coming from. We have no strength. Our strength comes from God. And David knew from the time he came out of the womb, it was all God. So what are you going to do if that's your case? If you understand how good God's been. Here's the natural reaction. Notice verse 6. My praise shall be continually of thee. I want to ask you a question. Are you a praising Christian? Are you a praising Christian? But tell me, what does that mean? To praise means to celebrate. To celebrate God. God is someone who's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. And when we look at how God has strengthened us from the time we were born right up to the present moment and all that he's done for us and him being our rock and him being our fortress and him being our deliverer and him being our confidence, the natural result is we ought to say, praise the Lord. Years ago, pastor preached a message. He talked about don't photobomb God. You ever watch somebody's all set up? They're doing some great picture. Everybody's looking good. They take the picture, and then afterwards, some fool was in the background, you know, doing something, and nobody caught it. And what happened? They wrecked the picture. Well, please hear me. Every time, every time I try to insert myself in a picture that's supposed to be all about God, here's what happens. I just ruin things. I just, come on now, church, help me now. Listen, we need to praise the one who's worthy of praise. Man, we're in an age where people worship flesh. We're in an age, man, we're, we're just, and I'm not, listen, take care of yourself. I'm not against, but we're in an age, man, where, where people walk around, and man, we, it's hard to look bad in America. I mean, because you can, you can dye it, you can, you can paint it, you can, you can clothe it, you, you can, if it's not going well, you can purchase money to do whatever, all this stuff, and just say, man, it's, it's hard to look bad in this country. And if not careful, we'll be vain. We'll walk around thinking how good we look and how wonderful we sound. Come on now. You say, Brother Ty, what do, what, be a little bit more clear. What are you saying? You're a worm. That's not nice. Oh, it's true. It's true. And I'm a bigger worm than you. I'm the wretch in the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
I didn't save me. I didn't set me up. I didn't bring about all the goodness of God. It's a God thing, and he alone is worthy of praise. You better give him the glory. You better give him the honor. David was a man after God's own heart. He said in 1 Samuel 17, when he killed Goliath, young man as a teenager, he said that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. He wanted God to get the glory. Notice here as we move through, verse 7, I am as a wonder unto many. You say, why? Because David had been established as king. Now it was going badly for him. His own son was rising up against him. But thou art my strong refuge. You see that word strong again? Strong habitation in three, strong refuge in seven. Boy, God's strong. Rock, fortress, my strong refuge. You know what a refuge is? It's a place where you go when you're in the storm. You ever see somebody on the highway and they're riding along on a motorcycle, the rain comes and they'll pull over underneath of the overpass. What are they looking for? A refuge. A refuge, a place to get out of the rain. You know when troubles come, you say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, God knows what to do. Run to God. Let God be your refuge. You say, physically, I don't think I'm going to make it. Let God be your refuge. Mentally, I just feel like I'm under attack. Let God be your refuge. Emotionally, my spirit, I just feel like I'm flat as a pancake. Let God be your refuge. Run to God. Run to God. Run to God. Whatever your need may be, God's able to meet your need. Eight, let my mouth be filled with thy praise. And with thy honor, please notice this statement, all the day. You might mark that. Notice that, all the day. Let my mouth be filled with praise and with thy honor all the day. Let me ask you a question. What's your mouth filled with? I don't know if you ever said to somebody, hey, you keep, you, 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 you keep my family's name out of your mouth. What's that mean? No, I don't want you to even, don't even say our name. Don't, you just be, what's in your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? You know, the older you get, you shouldn't complain more. You should praise more. Yeah, it's so hot out here, but I'll tell you what. God just gave us the most incredible weather, like in the history of the world. Well, it's going to be hot tomorrow. Well, enjoy today. Well, it's getting hot this afternoon. Bah, 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 bah. You live in the United States of America. You, you barely have to go from your car to the front door here. Wow, that was a tough run, wasn't it? From the parking lot to here with the air condition. You run back out there, blast the air. Oh, man, this thing's not cooling fast enough. I mean, that meant by the time you got to the pike here, it wasn't cool yet. And then you get in your car, you go home, and you get there in the house, and you got it all cranked. Uh, when we're, oh, boy, it's so hot. Why don't we shut up about what we think is wrong that's not wrong and just go ahead and praise God for all of his goodness? Boy, God's people should stop their complaining. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. This is wrong and that's wrong and blah, 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 blah. David's like, I'm going to praise God when I get old. I say, Brother Charlie, get off that old stuff. Well, old is relative. You decide. But I'll tell you, some of the people I enjoy being around the most, people praising God, no matter what their age. Mrs. Brown's back there, and she's a young lady. I don't know how old Mrs. Brown is. Raise your hand, Mrs. Brown, back there by the sound booth. She didn't expect to get called out. But yesterday here, she was cleaning, and I stopped and talked to her. And thanked her. I said, Ms. Brown, how long have you been cleaning this church? I've seen her on Saturdays countless times. Well, back to the old building. For a good 20 years, she comes in here and takes seriously. By the way, if you didn't know, this building doesn't clean itself. You say, well, who do you pay? No, no, no. There's people in our church that volunteer to do what they do. And she's, she's going to kill me for this. But for the glory of God, if you appreciate Ms. Brown's cleaning for 20 years, would you let it be known right now? I sure do. But I appreciate, I appreciate people that are in it for the long haul and they've got the joy of the Lord. I've never heard her one time in 20 years say, I, you know what, people in this church, I don't know why they get this building so dirty. I got to clean it again this week. I'll tell you what, man, you clean that auditorium, brother child. You know how many people bite their fingernails and spit it on the floor in church? I don't know. What, you say, ew, oh, it's ooh. You ought to ask the cleaners about it, right? Some people are like Neanderthals. I don't know. They must bring blades here to chop them off. And, you know, the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so that's sickening. I know it is. And there's a lot of other stuff that's pretty gross in the local church when it comes to cleaning. But thank God for people that clean a building without a complaint. 
and not getting paid to do it. Amen, amen. Well, you don't understand. I understand this. God's been better to you than what you deserve. God's been better to me than what I deserve. And I'm not walking around just being miserable all the time, complaining all the time about what I don't like in life. Hey, let me just tell you something. This world here is great for me. I'm a Christian, and it gets better on the eternity side. We're going to go and be with God where there's no more sin, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more sadness, no more Satan. We're going to be with the Savior for all of eternity. Maybe we ought to smile about it every once in a while. Amen. And watch, David was in the thick of battle and aging, but he still kept his joy. Keep reading with me here. We're rolling. Eight, let my mouth be filled with the praise and with, the honor, all, with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Notice there again the word strength. His strength was failing, but he was determined to go in the strength of the Lord God. It may be actual that in some area of your life, your strength is failing and you're waning, but that's even more so why you need to be depending on God. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him, persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Sure, enemies are real. You can have issues at work, and you didn't even do anything wrong. You can have people there in the neighborhood just don't like you because you're a Christian. You can have people in your family that would oppose you and come against you because you're a believer in Christ. Say, what do you do with all that? You go to God with it. Notice what he said in verse 12. Oh God, be not far from me. Oh my God, make haste for my help. You know, you can ask God to be in a hurry. Make haste, God. Please pick up the pace, Lord. I need help. You say, man, I'm just so weak. Anybody can say, God help me. God help me. God help me. You say, that's too simple of a prayer. Oh no, God loves simple prayers. You remember Peter when he was thinking, Lord, save me. God would save anybody. God would help anybody. God wants to help you. Keep rolling here. 13, let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. In verse 1, he didn't want to be in confusion. He wanted it all kept together. But he's praying a whole lot of judgment on his enemies. Let them be confounded and consumed. They're adversaries of my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. He's saying, God, stop my enemies. You know, you can ask God to give you victory over the devil. You can ask God to give you victory over the forces of hell that would come against you. Now, if you're saved, you can't go to hell. But if you're saved, the devil will still attack you. And you've got to look to God. 14, but I will hope continually. Please mark that. We saw in verse 5, thou art my hope. But it wasn't an off and on, once in a while thing. He said, I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Notice the increase in praise. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation. Here's that statement again, all the day. Remember that in 8? And here it is, it's back. All the day. Maybe because he got older, old people go to bed earlier, and he wasn't talking much about being awake at midnight. But he said, for sure, all the day. Some of you can relate to what I just said there. Young people are like, what's he mean? Oh, you'll figure it out someday. All the day. I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness, thy salvation all the day. And notice what he said, for I know not the numbers thereof. You know what he's talking about? I don't know how many days I have to live. Bible says in Psalm 90, so teach us to number our days. If I said you've got five days left, five days left, what would you do? I'll tell you one thing you'd do, you'd pray. I mean, if there was no hope beyond five days, you'd pray, you'd talk to God, you'd get things between you and the Lord to where they need to be, and you'd praise the Lord. You'd be telling God how good he is. Well, let me remind you, you don't know how many days you have. Well, I got a plan someday. I'm going to get this all fixed up. For now, I'm in a big mess, but someday I'll get it all fixed up. Today, today is the day that you have. Don't wait to tomorrow to praise God. Praise God today. Don't wait tomorrow to get things fixed between you and God. Get things fixed today. It's so very important. Here we go. 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God, his determination. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. 
Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But the righteousness of Christ, that's how we have salvation. And he said, I'm going to go in that strength. Oh, God, young people notice, thou hast taught me from my youth. And hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. From the time David was young, he was learning how God was his strength and God was what he needed. And from the time he was young, he was declaring the wondrous works of God. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, come on now, some of you zone in there. Oh God, forsake me not until, here's his goal, do you see it? Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. Notice the word strength again. Show thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. You know what David's saying here? God, your strength is something that's worthy of praise. Your power is valuable. It's a treasure. It's necessary. It's what's most important. Not for people to live according to their strength and according to their power, but to live according to God's strength and to live according to God's power. And David said, listen, God, from the time I've young, been young, I've been talking about your wondrous works. And now I'm old. And God, I have a desire. God, I have a goal. I want you to let me live in such a way that a next generation will know that God's been strong in my life and God can be strong in their life. You know what we need right now? We need some adults. Watch me. We need some adults right now to start to live in close communion with God and say, I will go in the strength of the Lord God to where anybody observing, not for the glory of you or not for the glory of me, but for the glory of God so that everyone can observe and see God's strength in your life, God's power in your life, God's enablement in your life. We need men and women of God who will go in the strength of the Lord God so there's a next generation coming up that can see how God works, that can see how God moves, that can see what God's done, is doing, and can do for their lives. I want to ask you adults here. Are you and am I a good demonstration of someone who's living in the strength of the Lord God? Let me ask it to you this way. Do we have God's power? Do we have God's power? Do we have God's strength? Do we have God's enablement? And are we praising God for it? We should be. We should be. Next generation, please hear me. Younger group here. And you can decide what that means. Are you somebody that will be like David? While he's young, he looked at the older man. He looked at a Jesse, his dad. He looked at a Samuel, the prophet. No doubt there were other women there in his life growing up and people that would have been there that knew God also. And David said, listen, while I'm young, I'm going to walk with God. While I'm young, I want to know God. Hey, gentlemen, watch. At 17, 18, however old he was when he killed Goliath, that wasn't just he happened to walk into the Valley of Elah that day and somehow flipped the switch and went out there and killed Goliath. David had been walking with God. David had been experiencing God. David had been communing with God. And you young men that are in this room and teenagers and early 20s planning to have a family, planning to have a marriage, planning to make your life count for God, hey, you better get God's power. You better get God's strength. You better not be relying on how much you can bench press. You better understand there's a God in heaven who gives you your next breath. There's a God in heaven who's given you the opportunities that you have. It's the God in heaven who showed you the truth about the word of God. And we need a next generation that says, I'm not going to live according to my strength. I'm going to live according to the strength of the Lord God. You mamas raising babies in this age, are you raising them with the strength of the Lord? You workers here in this church, Sunday school teachers and bus workers and children's workers, are you, are you demonstrating, are you exemplifying somebody who's walking in the strength of the Lord? David's saying, God, I don't know how much time I have left. 
But for whatever time I have, would you please work in my life quickly as we finish out? Notice here. Thy righteousness, 19, also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things? Oh, God, who is like unto thee? Boy, we ought to pray that way. We ought to speak to God in that way. Oh, God, who is like unto thee? I don't want to lose the wonder of the cross. I don't want to get over what God's done in my life. Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles. I do want you to notice that. David's spirit about his troubles. Can I ask the old heads to listen? Don't get bitter. Don't get bitter about some of what you've experienced. Some troubles you've gone through. David said it this way, thou which has showed me great and sore troubles. You know how you build your confidence in God? By going through storms. It's always smooth sailing. You don't really sense. You don't really know. You don't really understand. Young people, let me just say something. Your life and the good life that you're living, thank God for it. But you better slow yourself down and spend some time with some people that have been through some things and learn from them. All things work together for good. It didn't say all things are good, but all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Can I encourage you folks that may be a little bit further down the trail? Keep the spirit David had about troubles. Lord, you showed me that. You brought me through. I want to hope in you, Lord, because I know you can do for me what needs to be done during this test, this trial, this tribulation. Don't get bitter at God. Somebody here today, you're fighting bitterness. Fighting bitterness because of what's gone on in your life, things that you did not see, where things went off script according to what you had planned. But Charlie, under the circumstances, hey, listen, God's above the circumstances. God's working a plan. Great and sore trouble shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. David said, God, I've been on my face, but I know you can raise me up. And you may feel on your face today, but God can raise you up. Thou shalt increase my greatness. Now, that's not talking about so he'd get glory. It's talking about expanded influence for the glory of God and comfort me on every side. He's wanting God's blessing. There's nothing wrong with desiring God's blessing and praying for God's blessing. I also, I will also praise thee with the psaltery. He hadn't lost his instruments, his song, even thy truth. Oh my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp. Remember how he played the harp when he was young before Saul? Folks, he still has his harp. And he still has his song. Don't let your spirit dry up. Stay close to God. O oh, thou holy one of Israel, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. David's saying, those who come against me, God's going to bring judgment on them. But by God's grace, I've been preserved. So, here's the thought. Will you decide today, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Pride is when we depend on ourselves. To go in the strength of the Lord God, you've got to have a daily walk with God. To go in the strength of the Lord God, you've got to be in God's book every day. To go in the strength of the Lord God, you've got to be on your knees. You've got to be spending much time in prayer. You've got to be serious. To go in the strength of the Lord is your great opportunity. Would you take advantage of it as a Christian? Maybe you feel like the devil's just been smacking you around. Maybe you feel like enemies have come against you. Maybe you just feel like so many different areas of your life where it's been growing weaker. God, God has that strength. And he wants to give it to you today. If you're not saved, if you're not a Christian, you ought to get saved today. It'd be the greatest decision you could ever make. I hope there'll be a couple of young people here today that say, you know what? I, I want what the old folks have that know God and the strength that they demonstrate in their lives. And I hope there'll be some senior saints here. And again, you decide how old that means. That you would look and say, there's a generation coming behind me. And I'm not going to live for me, and I'm not just going to ride this thing out. I want to live for God so that God gets the glory, and they see God's working in my life. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, please, for just a moment here. We'll begin our invitation. And no one's leaving unless it's an emergency, please. We...
have an invitation at the end of every service. It's an opportunity for people to put their faith and trust in Christ. How many people could honestly say, Brother Charlie, if I died right now, I'm 100% sure positive that I would go straight to heaven, not because I'm good or religious, but for a Bible reason. I know I've done what the Bible says a person has to do in order to be saved from sin and hell. And I've had that moment when someone took a Bible and showed me from the Bible how I could be saved and I trusted Christ or somehow I came to know the gospel and I trusted Christ. If you know that you've been saved and have trusted Christ, with heads bowed and eyes closed, would you raise your hand real high if you know that? And you may put your hands down. I could not see and really honestly did not look this morning to see who all had their hand up or not. But God knows. God knows whether you've trusted Christ or not. Is there anybody here this morning, you'd be honest enough in church that you'd say, I've got to be honest. If I died right now, my heart stopped. I fell out from this pew right now. I'm not sure. I'm not positive that I would go straight to heaven. And I'm concerned about my soul. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to make you get up or anything like that. But I will pray for you and give you an opportunity to trust Christ. Is there anybody, you'd be honest enough in church today and you say, you know, I just don't know. I'm going to heaven, and I'm concerned about that, and I think God's moving in my heart some, and he's having me think about this, and, and I could use that prayer. If that's you, with heads bowed and eyes closed, and you're not sure you're going to heaven for a Bible reason, would you raise your hand just high enough where I could see it, and then put it right back down? Thank you, I see that hand. And who else? And, and thank God. And anybody else? I'm looking across in the auditorium. I don't know. I'm concerned. Thank you. And you can put your hand down. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to have prayer here in just a moment. I'm going to pray for you. My prayer doesn't save you, but I'm going to pray that you'd get saved. Salvation is free. It calls Christ as life. It calls God as son. But it's free to us because Jesus paid it all. If you'd like to trust Christ in just a moment, there's ladies down here if you're a lady. When others come forward to pray who've already trusted Christ, they're going to kneel here and pray. You could just follow them down. And if you're a man, you come to one of the men, a lady come to one of the ladies, privately and off to the side, and it doesn't even take a long time. They'll show you from the Bible how you could trust Christ. You could make that decision. You could leave here today with the assurance of your salvation. You could leave here today knowing you're going to heaven. And I promise you, upon the authority of God's word, it would be the greatest decision you could ever make. Because it would give you assurance of eternal home in heaven. Who would say this, Brother Charlie, I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but there's whatever areas of my life. It could just be natural aging. It could be discouragement. It could be burdens. It could just be wherever where you just feel like I have felt really weak here lately. And I'm going to make a decision today to go in the strength of the Lord God. I'm going to just throw myself in God's direction and ask him for strength. And I'm going to depend on him for that strength I need. If that's you, would you raise your hand? God spoke to your heart that way. Many, many, many hands across the auditorium. God bless you. You can put them down. One last question. This one's going to be a little bit tougher. And I'm not doing this to put on a show. But if there's anybody here, you say, you know what? I just, there's too much dependent on me. There's just too much dependent on me on whatever form or fashion, young or old. And I don't need to know about it, hear it all. But you just say, in some way, Brother Charlie, God spoke to me in my heart about even the idea of David. What a great man. But David not dependent on David. In some area, I've been dependent on me too much. And by God's grace, I'm repenting of that today. And I'm telling God, God, I want to go in your strength and not in my strength. If that's you, would you raise your hand? How many like that? Hands all over. God help us. God help us. Father, please bless our invitation. I pray for anyone that's not saved. God, I pray they get saved today. Give them the courage. Lord, it would be so difficult for some to think about walking down an aisle. But you could help them. And I pray you'd move in their heart and show them their need. God, for those who are just feeling weak and in your strength, I pray they do that today, depend on you. And Lord, wherever there's been pride in any of our hearts, Lord, I acknowledge my pride, forgive me. God, I want to fully rely on you and all the time. Help us, Lord, where we've been complaining instead of praising. And we pray in Jesus' name. Let's stand. The altar's open. People are coming to pray. We talk to God about how God talked to us. Maybe you just feel real weak. I'll tell you, the altar is a place to get strength. Why don't you come to God today and pray? Maybe as a married couple, you'd come and pray. Say, God, help us. If you're not saved, if you've never trusted Christ, I have many ladies standing here. All you have to do is take that first step. God will help you, I promise. 
I've got Damon here in the middle. Joe's over to my left. If you're a man that needs Christ, just come on down right now. Get that settled. If you're a lady that needs Christ, just come to Jesus today. You can get that settled. You don't have to wait. Dear lady, coming now to trust Christ. Who else? Who else? You can do it. God will help you. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. We're talking to people about the Lord Jesus Christ today. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Selena, if you'd step in, please. People coming to trust the Lord today. How about you? How about you? As Christians, let's depend on God. Let's depend on God. I will go in the strength of the Lord. David was under. Man, he had attacks coming at him. I will go in the strength of the Lord. saved, there's still time. Would you come right now? Take one of the hands of these folks here and they'll show you from the Bible how you can be saved. Had a dear lady come forward today to trust Christ. A young girl came forward to trust Christ. We pray that these would be saved. There's still time for you if you'd like to trust the Lord. Greatest thing in all the world. Father, I do pray for each person who's come here to the altar and people that are praying at their seats. Lord, you know our hearts. God, we do feel weak. Lord, for whatever variety of reasons, we sure do thank you for your strength. Lord, help us to walk humbly. Help us to give you the glory. Help us to praise you, worship you. Lord, you're awesome. Help us, please. Look this way. I'm praying that prayer in Jesus' name. Brother Jason, come on up here. We're going to do something real quickly before we dismiss. I found this song, and we're going to learn it. Cold Turkey, brand new. And uh, get the words up there on the screen. I warned them. Now, I had never heard this song before this morning. And I don't know that many of you would know it. It's an old Salvation Army song. So some of you know the Salvation Army and all of what it was. It was written in the 1800s, all right? So we're going to real quickly sing this through a couple times. And we'll sing it more tonight. Well, Jason, I hope you remember some of the tune because I don't remember all of it. Here we go. We're going to learn it, right? Trust is a miracle.
This is good. Here we go. We couldn't not sing it after I heard that. You know what's cool? Salvation Army people in the 1800s had the same God we have here in 2023. Just like they trusted in God, we get to trust them today. If you're struggling with addictions or stubborn habits, we have a Bible-based program called RU Reformers Unanimous, and folks are there. Brother Joel is in the back, and uh, if you are in need of help, then please see him at the Welcome Center right after the service. Brother Bradley or Ann, uh, Brianna, if I'm supposed to have different announcements on this with the baby stuff, please get that to me quickly. And if not, we're fine. We'll do it tonight. Starting point, if you're interested in joining our church, Thursday nights, they meet three weeks of it, not in a row, three weeks nonstop, but three different weeks. Go to solidrockinfo.org. That's for joining our church. So while we're there... Yes, the church family, this is Mike Morley. Mike was saved many years ago, and the last couple years he's been attending our church and really growing in the Lord. A couple weeks ago he was baptized, so we know he's saved. He's been baptized. He believes it's God's will for him to be part of Solid Rock Baptist Church. So with an amen and a hand clap, would you welcome him to our church amen. family? Amen. That's awesome. And uh, come on by. Many of you have seen Mike or know Mike, but uh, come on by, shake his hand, tell him you're glad that he's part of our church family. Amen. We'll do that in just a second. Master Club's kickoff is coming September 14th. It's a Thursday. And if you're going to have your kids go to that, it's three years old up through sixth graders, $20 per child or max 50 bucks per family. Sign up online at solidrockinfo.org. Next Saturday, we're going to go to Ocean City Boardwalk, pray for nice weather. We'll be down there. Get there whenever you want. 7 p.m. in front of Wonderland Pier. We'll all gather. You won't be able to miss us. We'll be out there. I'll preach a little bit if I get my voice back. We'll sing a lot, and it'll be a good, fun time. So if you're going to be on the boards, meet us up there at 7 o'clock in front of Wonderland Pier. World Missions Sunday, and really World Missions Week, the 17th through the 24th, but World Missions Sunday will be the 24th, and so that's coming quickly. You pray about that and that God would help us. All right? Any other announcements here? I'm rolling. We're going to close in prayer right now and ask God to help us. Father, I pray you bless church.